Thank you very much, George. I'll read out the introduction first, item agenda one. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to this virtual meeting of the Planning and Development Committee. Can I remind all participants that normal rules of procedure apply? For example, comments and questions need to be directed through the chair. As we are meeting virtually, proceedings may take slightly longer, so your patience is appreciated. As per our virtual meeting procedures, if questions have been raised prior to the meeting, I will call on the relevant member at the appropriate time to raise the question. If you are invited to speak, please state your name and be as specific as possible about which issue it is you are speaking to. While members of the public can view this meeting via YouTube Live, they will not be able to actively participate or comment on proceedings. As this meeting is being live streamed, can I remind all participants that their conduct should reflect this. Any agents, applicants or objectors that wish to speak on a particular application have had the opportunity to inform the planning department in advance of today's meeting. I will advise, I invite those individuals to present their cases at the appropriate time in the proceedings. Withholding the, mode, the meeting remotely to reduce the likelihood of technical issues, those individuals have been asked to dial in to the meeting via telephone. Well, that's no change because they're all going to be live. Please be advised there will be a time limit of five minutes for those who wish to speak in support of an application and five minutes for those who wish to speak in objection. For example, if more than one person wishes to speak in objection to an application, the time allocation of five minutes will be divided between those speakers. There may be also ward councillors in attendance who wish to speak. I'm the chair of the committee today. My name is Councillor John Hobson. Also, we have in attendance Paul Clark and Andy Glossop from Planning, Simon Thompson from Highways, Joanne Youngs from Legal, Chris Lund and Georgina Moore from De Democratic Services. The other individuals that you can in see in attendance are councillors who are members of this committee and will make, to the, make the decisions at today's meeting. We do have two other councillors in attendance, Councillor Arundel and Councillor Furness, but they will not be involved in the, in the voting. Right. Item agenda two, apologies for absence. Do we have any apologies for absence? No apologies have been received, Chair. Thank you. Do we have any declarations of interest from members of the committee in respect of the item scheduled for consideration at today's meeting? Sorry, somebody say yes? Yes, please, Chair. Councillor Rostron. Councillor Rostron. Yes. Your item to 429 Linthorpe Road is actually in my ward. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Ostron. Right, agenda item. Chair, can I, with regard to apologies for absence, please? We did have a notification yesterday that Councillor Platt's brother had died, and I imagine that's why he's not here today. Right, okay. Thank you, Councillor. Agenda item four, minutes of the previous meeting. Can we approve the minutes? Can we approve the minutes as a correct record? As there's no dissent, those minutes have now been agreed. Schedule 5, the schedule of, of planning applications to be considered by the committee. Well, we were going to change these round, but we've decided now to put them back in the order that they were. So, the first... The first the, the, <laughs> we've, we've put them back out of the way because Councillor... Councillor uh, Fairness has, has um, arrived on scene when we thought he was going to have to phone in. So before I hand over to Andy to present the details of the first application, as Andy will be sharing PowerPoint slides for each application on the screen, this will limit my view of members during his presentation. Therefore, can I please ask that all committee members refrain from asking questions during his presentation until he has stopped sharing his screen. Andy, could you please present the details of the first application, which is the one on Connaught Road. It's for a single-storey extension to rear 
part, con part conversion of a garage to residential annex, including installation of roof lights. Thank you, Andy. Um, proposal. It's a single story extension at the rear of 15 Connaught, and it's the insertion of seven roof lights into an existing detached garage. The use of the detached garage as an annex in itself does not require planning permission. That's a continuation of the existing residential use class of the, uh, the, the planning unit, which is the property and its garden and the buildings within that. Okay, so we can see from the slides that 15 Connaught Road is a semi-detached property. It's got a long rear garden and this is characteristic of the properties within the immediate area. Number 13 and 17 Connaught lie either side of the properties and properties in Bed Bedford Road lie to the rear. So if we look at the two different aspects of the application, firstly, the single storey rear extension. Well, the host property um, already has a single storey extension to the rear, which lines up with a similar extension positioned on the attached neighbouring property. See that from the slide there with the, the French doors in the rear. The proposal is to extend the property, the, the, the ground floor single storey section out by half a metre and replace the pitched roof with a flat roof. And that flat roof will increase slightly in height from the existing gutter line to be another half metre higher. The fenestration is intended to change, so the detailing within the walls is intended to change, and you can see the large bifold doors that have been shown on the slides. The red lines, the two small red lines, show approximately the increase in height of the roof going from the, the pitched roof to the flat roof. Um, the proposed extension is considered to be subservient to the main dwelling very small increase and in its position at the rear means that it's not going to have a very it'll only have sorry a very limited impact on the character and appearance of the area the extension will sit along the shared boundary with number 13 which has a set of double doors within its rear elevation and they're positioned close to the boundary as the projection will increase any increase in height is minimal the additional impact would be very limited on the adjacent property and the double doors within the neighbor's rear elevation would still receive a reasonable level of light. So turning to the other part of the works, this is the installation of seven roof lights into the what is currently the garage block. This, the, ins the installation of the roof lights is intended to support the conversion of the use of the detached garage to become effectively a garage and an annex to the main dwelling. So as I've mentioned, the conversion to the annex does not require planning permission. It's only the insertion of the roof lights that we're able to consider and the impacts associated with those. The proposal um, initially, so sorry, we just got the existing garage plans and elevations on the slides there. Hopefully that just shows members the sort of floor plan at the ground floor on the bottom left hand corner. There's a single garage area and there's an upper storage area, which is within the, the pitched roof, within the roof space. So um, the proposal was initially for the installation of four roof lights in the front roof slope and four roof lights in the rear. The intended garage and annex layout shown on the plans. So it's intended to keep the garage, include a kitchen and a staircase uh, in the other half of the garage at ground floor and then use the upper floor as a sort of office or study but also include a shower room within that. Um, that say the internals aren't something that we, we have control of, it's just the roof light so that's largely immaterial. What the plans are showing there is the position of the roof lights. So importantly um, within the roof slope you can see the bottom right hand image that's the what we call a section through the building. So you can see the ground floor area, you can see the stairs leading up, and then you can see the upper area within the roof slope. You can see from the drawing that not all the space in that roof slope is usable, and a reasonable proportion of that is um, so low in height that it's, it's it would be sort of walled off from, from the main section of that room in the roof. Um, it's considered that adding the roof lights to the building 
would only slightly change the overall appearance of the building and therefore have no notable or detrimental harm to its character. The main consideration relates really to the use of the roof lights and that they will provide the ability for people to look out of them, to open them up and impact um, and you know have an impact on the surrounding privacy and immunity of adjacent occupiers and arguably the perception of privacy for neighbouring properties and the impact on perception of privacy is also a material planning consideration. So there have been a number of objections from properties from those properties either side number 13 and 17 Connaught and from the two properties to the rear in Bedford Road. The um, majority of the objection really relates to the overlooking at close quarters that, is, that residents feel will happen and the additional noise that the use of the proposed annex and the roof lights will result in. Other issues have, have been raised and these are detailed within the reports that members have and obviously come back on those if, if members need to. Um, so looking at the considerations around this these roof lights, so whilst the outbuilding can already be used as an annex, it's recognised by officers that through the insertion and operation of the roof lights that the additional impact can occur and is likely to occur in terms of the views out and the noise that's going to be generated. Using the outbuilding as a residential annex would arguably lead to more, let's call it residential related noise in this location. It's not going to introduce an alien noise, so it's not going to introduce sort of industrial or commercial noise into the area. It's just arguably more of the same sort of noise. What the different situation here will be is that it will be in a different location to where you would normally have it happening in that area. So it'll be close to the boundaries with the adjacent properties from within the building. Not necessarily too dissimilar to what might be uh, what might occur with someone to put decking at the end of the garden or a summer house or something similar and use it uh, to, to, to a reasonable extent. Um, the, the one thing to bear in mind is that um, properties and their windows are relatively close to one another's boundaries along the street. It's fairly typical in a residential layout. That's the existing houses. And from it's not uncommon within housing layouts for one property from the upper floor windows to be able to look down into the neighbor's garden at close quarters. And arguably, if the neighbor's got music on and a window open, then that's usually audible uh, or quite often audible within the adjacent properties. Um, for these reasons, in relation to noise, it's not considered that the proposed roof lights should, where reasonably used, where the space is reasonably used by the residents, shouldn't really amount to a significant detrimental impact on the residential immunity of the adjacent occupiers. So moving to the other consideration, which is really the privacy considerations. Roof lights ideally would be in a position where they would be set above head height or quite high up within the roof slope um, and that helps to avoid overlooking. Now what we can see from the slide with the uh, section shown on, the, the height of the room within the roof space does not allow the roof heights to be located high up. They will be sort of at head height and lower. So they will allow views out um, and in the open position, that will be obviously more more apparent. Um, within the outbuilding's front roof slope, um, there were intended to be four uh, roof lights. Officers raised concerns about the extent of roof lights being proposed and the, the impacts that it does have. And the application has been amended slightly to remove one of those roof lights. It's also been amended to show the two roof lights into the shower room has been obscurely glazed and the one at the front being fixed as well. So that roof light in the front would not open. So effectively what we've got in the front is two opening clear glazed roof lights serving the office and study area and a fixed obscure glazed roof light serving the shower room. In the rear, we've got three clear glazed and opening roof lights serving the office. Well, two serving the office study, one serving the light, uh, the stairwell and a uh, obscurely glazed one serving the shower. Um, I think it's important for us to bear in mind that roof lights operate and provide a different aspect than a more traditional window. These roof lights are um, 
approximately 80 centimeters by 55 centimeters wide so um sort of just over half a meter wide by just short of a meter a meter long um the roof light's been you know a sort of traditional window at a meter a meter and a half two meters wide and and somewhere between a meter and a meter and a half high within a vertical elevation would give generally a much greater view out of it and you probably everyone can imagine their own uh rooms that you get a reasonable look out of a window from sort of a reasonable portion of the room roof lights don't operate like that they're in a roof slope so they're not in a vertical position and from when you, wherever you stand within the room as soon as you step slightly to the side of the roof light you get a much reduced uh, view out of it so it's not quite the same relationship as, as a normal window um we, we have some images so we have some distances shown on plan so the roof lights are um approximately 15 meters from the ground floor of 17 connaught 19 and a half meters to the first floor 19 meters to the attached property of 13 connaught and then 23 and 28 meters away from the properties associated uh, to the rear of Bedford Road. We do have some images that the residents of those properties have supplied us. So the images that members hopefully can see now are from the ground floor of 17 Connaught looking out towards the roof slope of the building where the roof lights would be proposed. Um, th this image is looking down from the first floor of 17 Connor. The, the slides are, and are titled, so if, if I'm talking ahead of the slides, apologies. Um, but, so this is looking down from the first floor um, to the roof slope, and then this is looking to seven uh, from 13 Connor towards the garage in question. One view from the garden and one view from the first floor window. Okay, so that gives members a feel of standing in those areas what the view would be like there or thereabouts in the rear roof slope so there's four um sorry so look, looking at, in terms of the front the impacts at the front looking at the distances that we've got and looking at the views that we've talked about and the roof lights and the limited views that they would achieve uh, it's officer's view that the revised proposal for three roof lights within the front roof slope one of which is fixed and obscure would not have a notable impact on privacy and amenity for the adjacent properties and cer certainly not sufficient to warrant refusal. In terms of the impacts at the rear, um, the greatest impact here is really, um, so we've got two images here, one from uh, both properties in Bedford Road, one looking at the rear there and the other one looking just the, the the garage is just to the right in the image and we can see that the occupier of that property up a ladder there's an, there's an owl nest box within that tree and that's something else that's been brought out within the report which i'll come to just at the end but that's the sort of proximity of the garage to those to those gardens um and arguably the greater impact from this proposal is in relation to the gardens associated with these properties not the windows within the properties because they're as i said sort of 23 28 meters away Due to the limited scale of the windows, it's felt that such views would not be achieved from all areas internal to the rooms within the outbuilding. And notwithstanding this, what views are achievable? You know, they are at close quarters to the adjacent gardens. And there are, I suppose, two key aspects to consider, really. One is the actual impact on privacy, and the other is the perception of privacy. So typically, gardens get afforded less control over maintaining high levels of privacy than would be expected within rooms of a house. Uh, as rooms of a house are expected to be the more private areas and get the highest usage. Also, most properties in residential areas have properties adjacent and, as I mentioned earlier, existing windows which already overlook into each other's gardens. Now, whilst these roof lights will be visible within the roof plane of the outbuilding, given their angle, given the size and the position, it's considered again that in the rear, um, that the actual impact will be relatively limited. It is accepted though that the perception has been overlooked could be a little bit greater so if windows are open and you can hear voices so if you're sat in your garden you can hear voices from the adjacent window then obviously that you you will feel overlooked even if there's nobody actually out overlooking um notwithstanding this um you know again subject to reasonable use which we have to assume for the majority of you know residential occupation officers view is that it would not be uh 
a significant detrimental impact to the privacy and perception of privacy associated with the adjacent properties. Just in terms, Chair, of the um, the nest box, the owl nest box, uh, an objector raised a concern around this. There's apparently an owl that's nesting in there at the moment. Um, officers, well, Middlesbrough Council doesn't have an ecolo in-house ecologist, so we've gone to Tees Valley Wildlife Trust to gain some advice from them. And they've uh, advises that tawny owls, which is the species within there, they do uh, gain protection, but it's the same protection as any nesting bird. And have said that it would be beneficial for the works to take place outside the bird breeding season, um, and that should be that should satisfy matters. So that condition has been recommended within the reports chair. I think I'll leave the presentation at that, and if members have got any questions, be more than happy to uh, to respond. Thank you, Andy. Do any members have any questions for Andy in light of the information presented? If you do, please raise your hand and we will, so it's visible, and I will invite you to speak in turn. Councillor Teague. Can you hear me, Chair? Yes, I can hear you, Councillor. Yes. Um, my own question is um, with regard to the nesting season, when does it finish? In other words, when can the work begin, please? The, uh, I think it's October, um, councillor. I'll just very quickly look at the conditions just to make sure. March to September. So after September, so that'll be, so, yeah, so the beginning of October, that'll be an appropriate time to start putting them in. And have we any idea when the when they, uh, property owners envisage starting starting the work? The reason I'm asking is that um, I'm not at all happy about making any decision on something like that when I haven't seen it for myself. But I would imagine around about October, we would probably be in a position where we could carry out site visits. Um, I've not, I'm not aware that the owners, um, it's not something we've discussed with the owner in terms of the condition because, you know, the condition is necessary to, if you like, protect the owl. So whether the, the owner, the applicant is agreeable to it or not, it's appropriate to, to protect the wildlife. So that's why I've put it on, but I understand what, you, what you're saying. Is that not a condition we could put on if we chose to? It, sorry, it is recommended as a condition, Councillor, yes. Thank you. Anybody else got any questions for Andy? No? Well, we should carry on. Are we still cool? Sure. Uh, Councillor Branson wants to speak. Sorry, I can't see you, Councillor Branson. Oh, all right, okay. Sorry, John. Um, yeah, um, I think the concern is mainly getting light into the upper area, particularly by the stairwell. Is it not possible for some or all of the roof lights to be opaque? so that they provide light but don't give the opportunity to see out of if i may chair yes you may andy yes carry on yes councillor um obviously it's you know it's within councillor's uh, decision to decide if, if more roof lights should be opaque um as a space i suppose it's quite nice to have a view out um arguably the roof lights in the rear elevation um, give a view towards other people's properties. The ones in the front give a view more over the applicant's own property. Um, but you know, yeah, I, I I would suggest you're right. The, the the need to get light in there is probably first and foremost um, the the important factor. Can I come back now? Yes, you can. You can, David. Yes. Um, I think first of all, the lights over the stairwell. Uh, are only really there for lighting purposes. You can't really look out of them, so they should be opaque. And I take the point about the view over the rear of the property rather than the front of the property. That would be a compromise that maybe would satisfy some of the objections, not obviously all of them. The other alternative, and I don't know whether it's practical, is to have your light actually on the ridge of the roof. I'm not sure whether that actually is a possibility. I'm, I don't know enough about building construction, but. Uh, certainly, you could opaque the windows where I mentioned. Thank you, Councillor. Has anybody else got any questions? Councillor Cope. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Can I, can I just ask about the, the access to that particular property? If it's going to be used as an annex, presumably at the moment it's through or by the property, 
but at the moment we're not considering that we're only just considering the the property for uh these lights etc yes sorry through you chair yeah that's right councillor um it's obviously a garage at the moment so there's a driveway that's um, laid out in front of it so it would already have uh the ability to get vehicular traffic into the rear there and yeah that would be i would assume it would either be accessed via the drive or through the existing property i guess for pedestrians yeah, thanks Jeff. thank you randy anybody else no All right well we do have an agent in respect of this application mr faruke he's he's going to speak on the application hey there mr faruke are you with us I'm indeed, Councillor. Thank you very much. Remember, you have five minutes and you will no be problem. timed. You present your case and then we'll ask you some questions. Thank you. Fire away. Good afternoon, members. My name is Fahim Faruqi. I'm the planning consultant acting on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. Rhodes. Following on from the office's recommendation, I just like to clarify the main points with relation to the garage and the proposed annex and insights. Every aspect of the application was carefully designed in line with planning policy see an outlook. The proposal is to provide an ancillary use, which is present as a garage and storeroom. The end use will be for an office, study, part of the time, and with accommodation for the client's brothers who has sound down syndrome. This space will allow him independent privacy from the main house when he comes to visit his family. The proposal is not for a separate residential dwelling, nor the applicant's intention which is controlled by a planning condition as listed on the actual decision, or sorry, the approval committee report. Members, in, in terms of recent objections, these were duly noted and the applicants agreed to a reduction of the number of roof lights as originally proposed. The repositioning, the high level, the obscure fossil glazing that we've already proposed with fixed openings have been designed to respect these amenity issues. Members, the roof lights are a small standard side roof lights, and the angle of bleak angle prevents any direct overlooking into these neighbours' gardens. The planning policy provides you separation distances, which these guidance follows, and the design follows. We, the applicants would require some sort of light, as you just mentioned, councillor, and it's not really possible to put anything in the ridge of roof lights. Opaking some of the roof lights we've already carried out, we've agreed to that simple. Then it's the amount of view that we can have in terms of the rear ones. So I can only ask my clients on that point of the opaqueness. But again, we've covered every angle, met every planning policy, and hopefully designed something that's not looking to prevent any overlooking into these neighbors' properties. Members, I look, it's been designed very sympathetically. Mitigators protect privacy, and it follows the guidance with planning policy. For these reasons, we respect members to consider the approval as the conditions imposed on the committee report and follow the officer's recommendation. If you require any further clarification, please do give me a, uh, a call or reception or whatever. <laughs> please, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ferroke. Thank you, Chair. Has anybody got any questions? Councillor Thompson. Um, oh, hello, Mr. Farouk. Can I just ask, um, do we know how many people are actually going to be living in um, the annex? The reason why I'm asking that is because there's been concerns raised about the increase in noise. Truthfully, zero. It's going to be used in office because my client, he works from home, he's home based. And um, as you can appreciate, living, working from a family home, it can be very noisy, you can't concentrate with work, so you'll go away and work in that office space. The family member who's the brother, he has Down syndrome, comes over now and again to see the family. He wants his independence. He wants to live there and, and he doesn't want to really conflict with the family ongoing in the main house. So truthfully, there's not really much ongoing in that place. It's just an annex, a separate annex for additional use, this office, family occupancy whenever so one person randomly thank you thank you thank you very much anybody else got any questions for mr farouk councillor coop councillor coop i can see you now yes uh thank you mr farouk okay. uh, do you. i do i understand then that the they wouldn't object if the 
was uh, suggested that it should have opaque windows in the rear to uh, so you can let light in, but the neighbours can be assured they're not being overlooked. Councillor, I think the compromise, I think we would be reasonable to say, is the stairwell, you know, on that. But there again, if you look at that point of view in privacy terms, you stood in the stairwell at a lower level, is that really overlooking? And then the distance of the, the two remaining windows get further away in the roof plane. If you look at the plans, I don't know if you've got a chance to look at this, um, or you can see them online. They're all set away from any angles of over, direct overlooking. So I, sometimes I think it's unfair to ask for opaque to all the windows in terms of what the positioning, the separation exceeding the 21 meter rule into habitual windows. So I can ask the question. They are here with me now. I think well. what, we're ask, what we're asking, asking is, is the ones that forward the owner's house, that's fine, but the ones that go into the next neighbour's garden, I just want to make that clear that I'm not asking for anything yeah. else. Um, are you mentioning all three councillors at the rear elevation? So all Anywhere four that, that the owners could possibly be, be accused, if you like, of looking out onto the adjacent property, because that's, as far as I can see, most of the complaints are about. So I just want to be, uh, you know, assured that if that was possible, that the uh, applicant would be prepared to do it. That would be a compromise. Uh, Councillor, they, they are in agreement. Um, it depends on which roof lights you're talking about in terms of the three at the back. Um, because, again, the 21, they exceed the 21 metre rule in terms of loss of privacy. So, do you have a specific roof light that you're mentioning that would like to be? Well, just looking at the plans and things which I have done, uh, is any yeah. ones where you're looking over? Certainly, the property behind seems to be this one of the strongest objections, and, and the person with the, the owl. Uh, I think it's mainly them that it's affecting, but of course, not into back onto your own property. Truthfully, Councillor, but when you look at the actual plans of physical body of the house, the photograph was taken close to the rear boundary line. It wasn't actually taken from the rear Hamilton room window. So the photograph that you've been shown is actually close to the boundary of the garage within the garden. So I understand that as well. I would refer back to perhaps. Um, uh, Mr. Glosser, perhaps you could uh, explain that a little bit better. Okay. Andy, chair. Can you come in on that, please. Yes, Chair. I'll just um, share the screen again. I think it's probably worth doing. Um, privacy is window to window privacy is very much um, laid down in, in planning, and most councils, as we do, have a distance, a 21 metre distance around maintaining reasonable privacy between opposing windows um privacy into gardens is is uh, never really um dictated by a distance but nevertheless obviously any extension or any building can affect privacy into a garden area so um it's it's it is a material planning consideration so it's perfectly reasonable um, to, to not unduly affect privacy associated with someone's garden. So, you know, the example that we often see is balconies and the like close to the boundary, which can cause problems. Um, this is obviously a different scenario. A, a roof lights in no way like a balcony because a balcony is much more open. But yeah, um, it's all I can say, councillor, is it's it's not unreasonable to, to look to restrict privacy in this regards. Although what... Um, the agent is mentioning the 21 meter distance it absolutely uh, is greater than the requirement for elevation to elevation of property but um in terms of the rear roof slope relative to the gardens and the what we term the private rear gardens it is obviously very very close to to those thank you andy thank you chair anybody anybody else got any questions for mr Faruke? Well, I, I I have a question for you. Can, can you still hear me? Yes, I can. So, Councillor Cooper suggested that we have some of the some of the windows, some all of the windows, of an opaque nature. Okay. Um, so, are you a, are you an applicant saying that they don't want that to happen? 
we are. I, really, I didn't really get no. an answer as a yes or a no from you. So. Yes, it's a no. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry, sorry. Apologies, I'm sorry, my hard of hearing. We're not, sorry. We're not yeah. out, but we'll do that. But is it necessary? Councillor, the applicant have stated that they would agree to opaque obscurity condition on those wood sites to the rear. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you very much. Anybody else got any questions for Mr. Faruke? No? Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Faruke. Thank you. We don't have any we don't have any um, any councillors representing the application in either way. Um, we don't have any objectors representing the application. So now all the evidence has been received. We can ask Andy, Andy to read out the recommendations. Again. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, so um, the recommendation on this is to approve and it's subject to condition. Conditions relate to commencing works within three years, subject to accordance with the approved plans, subject to uh, appropriate materials and subject to avoiding the bird breeding season. There's a condition on there saying the annex can only be used as an annex, but in reality, it would require planning permission to be used as a separate um, residential property. Um, and from what members have said, I think what, what just needs to be clear, um, Chair, when members are making either a, a motion or, or voting is um, if members are putting in for the rear roof lights all to be obscurely glazed um, or not, or it's just if, whether it's just in line with what was submitted. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Andy. Right, so we'll now open it up to the committee. We'll have a discussion. Let's see if somebody can put forward a proposal. So, Councillor Coop, you wish to speak first? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I would be happy if the windows, as suggested, were opaque. I think there's some way to satisfy some of the neighbours' complaints, because there has been quite a few. Um, I don't feel that that would stop the light, but it may stop the, the feeling of the people that they're being overlooked. So I would be prepared to propose that we accept it as those uh, conditions. Right. Before we ask for a seconder, has anybody else got anything to say? On... I'll just second that, Chair. Councillor Thompson, I can see your hand up, I think. Councillor Thompson? Yeah, um, I was just unmuting my mic. Um... I think um, when I look at one of the pictures, um, it, that uh, one of the pictures shows a view from the first floor, um, from seventeen Canorton Road. I think if you were if, um, by the picture, I would have concerns as the person who submitted the application that people would be viewing me from that first floor onto Canorton. Um, so well, that picture doesn't it doesn't do the application any justice. To be fair, I think some of the comments, some of the comments are relating to uh, noise. Um, it, it sounds like um, he's assuring us that's going to be used as more of an, an office and a, and a, a, tr a retreat. Um, so I can't see there being an increase. Um, I don't have I don't have any concerns about the windows being. Um, as they are, as they've been requested. Because in my view, in my experience, when I've seen um, uh, um, the, these type of, of windows, in the roof windows, you're looking up to the sky, you're not actually looking up, looking towards the property. I've, I've been in houses where they've got them in, and you're looking straight up at the sky. So, you know, I would, I would as far as I'm concerned, with, with Andrew's um, conditions, I would fully support this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor. Anybody else got anything to say? No? So will it be used? Sorry? Councillor Coop. Yes, Councillor Coop. I just I, I don't disagree with what um, Councillor Thompson said, but from what I understand of the property, they will be virtually at head height or slightly lower, so that that person would be able to view into the neighbour's garden, as all the vast majority of objections are about viewing, etc. I would suggest it would be a compromise, um, because otherwise we're just going to go and let it through 
and the people will feel uh, aggrieved that they, they will have a property being looked down on. So that's why I would propose that we accept it with all the other conditions plus the opaque. Right. And I wish to propose yeah. that. Chair Councillor McTry would like to speak. Yes, Councillor McTry. Councillor McTry, are you there? Councillor McTy, are you with us? Councillor McTy, have you unmuted your mic? It's working now. Uh, Councillor McTy, if you want to speak now at all. I had my hand up for quite some time, Chair, actually, but thank you anyway. Joan, I cannot see everybody on the screen. I'm, you know, I don't have no, vision. I can only see so many. <laughs> That's why the officers are there, isn't it? But by the way, well, they just have. They just told me that you wanted to speak. Go on, say what you wish to say. It's okay. Forget it. It's okay. Just leave it, chair. Okay. Right. Anybody else, John? Yes. Uh, I don't know whether you can see me, John. I <laughs> keep waiting. Can David? Yes. Okay. Um, just simply, I want to uh, uh, support what um, uh, uh, Councillor Coop said. I think that that is a good compromise. Uh, if you can't see if it's uh, opaque at the back, um, I think that that gives uh, the applicant most of what they want. Uh, and I think um, I, I, that's how I would uh, uh, that uh, that would be a, um, a proposal I would support. So you 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 will second David Coop's proposal then? I will. Yes. Right. Anybody else want to say anything? <laughs> Councillor Dodds and Councillor Garvey would like to speak, Chair. Councillor Dodds, ladies first. Thank you, Chair. Um, I agree that windows should be opaque, but if they are opening, you can still view the garden. They would still lose the privacy when the windows were opened. Is that a concern? They are quite high up in the roof. I, I, I don't really know where the floor is going to be inside. I mean, it's as Councillor Thompson said, usually you're looking when you're in something like that, you're looking up over to look out of them. But Councillor Garvey, what did you wish to say? Thanks, Chair. I just uh, I agree with Councillor Thompson. I don't think these windows will will prove to be much of a problem overlooking the do point of the sky. They're not easy access windows. They're not something you stand and look out of. Um, so I would support Councillor Thompson in saying that we we uh, we do we do agree with this application. Thank you very much. Anybody else wish to comment? Chair Councillor Nugent wishes to speak. I think. Councillor Nugent. Yeah, I agree with Councillor Thompson. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Right, can we now go to a vote? If I call everybody's name out in, in, in sequence, will you please answer for, against, or abstain? And we'll start at the top. We'll start with me. Councillor Hobson. Yeah. Yes, sorry? Chair, can just yeah. obviously, obviously uh, yeah, be aware need, whether or not we need a motion. with or without the uh, obscure yet. Okay, so do you, do you want us to write a do you want us to write a motion out that says the lights at the back are going to be are going to are going to be opaque glazed? Is that what you're after? I don't really know how you work this. Chair, what you chair? Sorry to interrupt. Um, you, what you could do is ask each member to vote in turn, and ask them to explain whether they wish to approve the application on condition or approve the application on condition with the additional condition in respect of the windows. Okay, okay. right. It's good thinking, right? Okay, we'll start again. Councillor Hobbs, um, I'm for it with the additional, with the additional motion. Councillor I'm for it with the additional motion. David Branson. Could you repeat that, please, Councillor Branson? Yes, uh, I'm. Oh. Hey there, Councillor. 
Councillor Branson, you're on, you're on mute. Oh. Uh, I should be all right now. Can you hear me now? Oh, no, we can hear you now, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm in, in favour of it with the additional requirement of the opaque windows at the rear. Okay. Councillor Dodds. Hello. Yeah, I, I approve with the um, additional the opaque windows. Councillor Garvey. I approve, just approve the application without the additional windows. Okay. Councillor McTeague? Application full stop. Sorry, I didn't hear that. I approve the application as it stands. Councillor Nugent? I approve the application with the conditions that I'm read out. Councillor Rostrand? the application as it stands. Mr. Thompson. Approve the application as it stands. Mr. Wilson. Sorry, Councillor, I didn't get that. Approve the application with the additional. Okay, thank you very much. Missed anybody out? No. Councillor Nugent, can I can you just confirm whether or not you want to approve the application on condition or with the additional condition? Uh, the additional condition. Okay. Right. Chair, I can confirm that six of the committee members wish to approve the application on condition with the additional condition relating to opaque windows. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. So back to Andy, what do we do now, Andy? Do we do we have to do put a motion in or do you do it or I just don't understand. No, I think the the, the motion uh, as I understand would be um uh, to go with the obviously the approving it with the additional condition then now chair. Right. Okay. So we have a result application is passed thank, thank you thank everybody thank you thank you well now we'll now refer to item number two which is 129 Linthorpe road change of use from a hot food from a retail to a hot food takeaway Thank you, Chair. I'll just... Um, just you, you, want, you do your, your, your little pictures, Andy, please. Yep. Thank you, Chair. Hopefully that's um, on people's screens. So this application site, it's 429 Linthorpe Road. It's a commercial unit that's located within a row of terrace properties towards the southern end of Linthorpe Road and within the Linthorpe Village Local Centre. The building is a mid-terrace property um, with part two-storey, part single-storey uh, offshoot to the rear. It was previously used as a retail unit and the first floor was used as storage space, but the whole unit is now vacant. So from the image there, it's the one with the uh, the arrow above it and the, and the sort of black or grey shop front. The proposal is for the change of use of the retail premises to a hot food takeaway. It's to construct a single-storey extension at the rear to assist with that and install a flue to the rear to deal with the uh, sort of cooking odours. Construction work had already started when the application was submitted. Um, importantly, I suppose to note, the arrangement of the shop front is intended to stay the same, but just with a new door and window uh, inserted. There's been a number of objections to the application and these are detailed within members' reports. Um, Councillor Furness, as local ward councillor, has objected to the application based on its um, proximity to the sort of bus stop and pedestrian crossing in this locality in, dis in respect of noise and disturbance that it's uh, anticipated to result in, odours, the appearance of the flu at the rear and the consideration of, that there's an over provision of hot food takeaways in the area. There's been two other objections and those objections relate to noise, loss of parking, antisocial behaviour, that the health impact statement was not provided for this scheme. 
um, cumulatively felt that there's an impact on the area from this type of use. The proposal doesn't contribute to the health and well-being of local residents. The aim should be re to reduce hot food takeaways, that um, it's an active retail frontage and it should be retained in Linthorpe and the impacts of litter. So moving to the considerations, the unit to the north of the application site is a hairdresser's, a beauty salon. Um, the restaurant, sorry, unit to the north is a restaurant, unit to the south is a hairdresser's and beauty salon. That's either side of the property. Residential properties lie to the rear on Benson Street, which we can see in the image, we can see that relationship, and also Oliver Street and Rudd's Yard, um, which is out to the rear. There's no uh, residential premises immediately adjoining the site, they are out to the rear. Properties on the opposing side of Linthorpe Road are a mix of retail and commercial uses. There's one residential property above one of the commercial units on the opposing side and planning permission was recently granted for the conversion of Stag House, which is just behind the uh, uh, traffic lights in the image and for that was for that to be converted to student accommodation. The site is located within an area defined as Linthorpe Village Local Centre in the local development plan. And uses such as hot food takeaways are considered to be appropriate in such areas, providing that they do not detract from the vitality and viability of the local centre. The council has got an interim hot food takeaway policy, and that determines proposals will be permitted for hot food takeaways in these sorts of areas, subject to certain requirements. And that is um, where the use would not result in the proportion of total units in the centre exceeding 10%. Um, it wouldn't result in more than two adjacent hot food takeaways and it would not uh, be designated within the designated primary shopping frontage area. Now we've looked at these criteria in relation to this proposal. The most current local centre survey was carried out in 2019. And what that shows is that the centre currently has a 7% proportion of hot food takeaways and it also has a 4% vacancy rate. There's one other hot food takeaway which has been approved but not yet um, brought into use within the local centre and with that one that's been approved and this one that's proposed it would take the it would increase the percentage of hot food takeaway takeaways within the centre to 9.2 percent and that would therefore still be compliant with a 10 percent policy requirement and the 10 percent policy requirement is really around making sure that these centres still maintain a, a viable retailing function for their local areas. As can be seen from the plan, so this is the plan from the um, March 2019 data of the takeaways. This, the, the, the red uh, stars show where the takeaways are located and they are spread throughout the centre, they're not all clustered in one, in one area. Um, and so takeaways shouldn't sort of overwhelm or dominate the, the character of this centre. It's important to say there are a couple of other takeaways just outside the centre boundary, the, the Linthorpe Village Centre boundary, and they aren't counted within these figures, but the reason is that they are outside the, the centre. Um, neither of the units adjoining the application site are takeaways. So again, that's another reason for this being compliant with our interim policy. I think consideration really should also be given to the benefit of bringing into use a vacant premises. The current vacancy rate of 4%, arguably that's not a high um, vacancy rate, but it also indicates that there's arguably not a high demand for retail units if there is a vacancy of that nature. Um, and it is beneficial in filling units to the vitality of the, o the overall centre. The interim policy also recognises the link between takeaway food and obesity. And in order to promote healthier communities, it determines that proposals for hot food takeaway should not be located within 400 metres walking distance of a secondary school. And in this case, the proposal meets that requirement without any problems. So just talk, uh, turning to the existing and um, pr uh, proposed plans. So at the minute, it's a shop with a room at the front, room at the back, and then a small outshoot to the rear and we can see that there's a two-story element to the outshoot and there is a single story element to the outshoot 
the proposal is to extend the ground floor out effectively by a full room to line up with the existing rear outshoot and that's a single story and with a flat roof on it so we can see those images um, on the screen the extension will be approximately 900 millimeters so just under a meter higher than the rear wall currently is it doesn't go all the way up to the rear wall though um, as part of this scheme as well it's proposed to put a ventilation flue in that flue is indicated by a dotted line on the uh, numbers slides that we can see on the presentation that comes out the rear of the main part of the building up um, through the roof of the single story section and out and vents it above the sort of roof height, above gutter height of those properties. Um, the council's environmental health officer um, has considered matters and doesn't have any uh, great issues. Um, advised that a noise assessment should be submitted prior to the use commencing, and this is fairly common for this type of use, and they would, they would need to uh, do that and submit that via the conditions that are recommended. Officers' considerations around this, you know, there will be some additional activity in terms of vehicle movements in the adjoining streets. However, it's considered that this sort of activity is where what you would expect within a local centre, particularly one that's so close to the town centre. The council's environmental health officer has suggested that the hour, opening hours should be restricted from 10 a.m. till 11 p.m. Mondays to Sundays, and that condition is recommended within the report. The odours would be picked up by the, the, the fume stack that's been mentioned. The fume stack is tucked between two two-storey outshoots, so it's not going to be particularly visible from the wider area, although it will be visible from some properties at the rear. In terms of highways, Chair, um, there's no off-street parking associated with this premises. It fronts onto Linthorpe Road where there's parking restrictions, but the premises well, it's already a you know it's already a retail premises in this location and we'll already have people visiting it and we'll already have deliveries and all the rest of it so the the proposed use would have to operate like many of the properties do in this location in, in exactly the same way in terms of customers and in terms of deliveries and you know sort of workers etc being a local center it's envisaged that uses here are of a scale and nature that serve the local area so it'd be expected the majority of people would arguably walk to this um, in this location. Council's Highways Engineer has not raised any objections to this and is obviously present to this meeting should members have any questions. The applicants obviously retaining some of the rear yard area, which is felt to be really important. So the waste storage uh, bins can be accommodated in the yard. Comments have been received, obviously, regarding litter and antisocial behaviour. These aren't really material considerations for this proposal. You know, littering and antisocial behaviour are the actions of individuals and not something that can be controlled by the applicant or even, you know, by imposition of conditions or the like. That would be different legislation that would have to deal with those matters were they to become an issue. Um, so in conclusion, Chair, it's considered that this proposal, its use is acceptable in principle, it's in a local centre, it will not undermine the vitality and viability of the centre, it's in accordance with local plan policies and the interim hot food uh, takeaway policy. It's also considered that the extension in the flu will be noticeable but not have a significant detrimental impact on the amenities of nearby residents um, and subject to the measures required by the conditions adequate impacts of noise and the like can be achieved. And the recommendation chair is to approve subject to the conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Any members have any questions for Andy in the light of the information he's presented? Yeah, chair. Chair, Councillor Thompson. Sorry, I can't see you. Councillor Thompson. Yeah, um, I've got concerns that um, the construction work has already started on site without the... So, so I believe. Without plan and permission yeah. being granted. I'd love to ask Andy about that because um, I, could, I, I went down to do my own site visit this weekend, but unfortunately, um, you're not allowed on the person's premises if you do that. You've got to stay well away. So I could only see through his alley gates and I couldn't see anything going on at all. So it's obviously in his yard that's happening. So Andy, you'll have to explain that to us. Andy? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, you know, it, obviously it's a frustration for members and we hear it quite a lot. People starting work before they've got planning permission and obviously been 
presumptive in that fashion. From a planning perspective, um, regardless of it being frustrating, we have to consider the planning merits of it still. And so um, the fact that it's commenced isn't a material planning consideration. We have to consider the merits and, and move forward on, on that grounds. But I understand what you're saying, Councillor. Thank you. Um, Councillor McTai wishes to answer. Councillor McTai. Can't hear her. Can you hear me now, Chair? Yes, I hear you now, John. Yeah, carry on. Thank you. Um, I simply want to ask you a question. Um, I, I would like to see no more um, takeaways. I'd like to see less. But the question I want to ask is if we approve this, since they're not breaking any planning laws um, and they are uh, appealed, what is the officer's what is the officer's opinion of them winning the appeal and obviously costing us money? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Through you, um, Sandy. Yes, we've got a policy. Policy is our has to be our starting point for making decisions. It's what we get held to um, in terms of appeals, and that would be what the inspector would consider first stand. So he would look at the criteria in the policy, and obviously the criteria suggests ten percent. Now, any policy is obviously, um, it is a policy, but it is also guidance. So if there's something very material to this specific set of circumstances that would suggest even 10% would be too much in members' minds, then that would be material. But it, it, it's it's kind of how would you then evidence that? So I don't want to particularly um, draw on any, any sort of examples, but if, for argument's sake, there were already an awful lot in and around the you know clustered around this area then that might be a particular concern in this instance obviously what we've seen is that this spread throughout the center now interestingly obviously if this were to be approved and with the other approved approved scheme that's not yet been implemented that takes the percentage up to 9.2 percent i think so any further ones after this possibly would breach that 10 percent now it's not that 10.1% is is has to be a refusal and can't be approved, but it's that 10% is is moving away, obviously, and going beyond that policy. So the, the considerations start to not be in favour of it rather than being in favour of it. I've probably gone on a bit much there. Sorry, Councillor. Thank, okay. Thank you. Chair. Anybody else got anything for Andy? Um, Councillor Ostrand. Am I, am I right in thinking that percentage only includes the facilities actually on Linthorpe Road because there are two chip shops just on the corner and there's also a couple on the other side of the road and that, that would take us well above the 10% if they were included. If I may Chair, um, yes absolutely right Councillor, there's um, when we've looked at this the, the, the boundary for the centre doesn't include all the commercial properties in this area so an average person in the street would possibly take the view that you know the chip shop I think it's a chip chase chip shop there's a Chinese restaurant I think in Oliver Street um, or something chip similar shop. is it a chip shop yeah. it's a chip shop yeah. and, and I think that's outside the centre as well so you're absolutely right there are other takeaways in this locality which are outside the centre yeah Chair, I believe Councillors um, Nugent and Branson wish to speak. I think Council Councillor Wilson was first. I think I saw him. Councillor Wilson. Yeah, that, that's uh, it's the living living accommodation above this uh, place. Is it a flat above the shop? Uh, through you, Chair. The it's 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 indicated a storage area previously, and there's no proposal for this to sh to change that. So this application wouldn't alter. That circumstances. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Branson. Well, um, yeah, just looking at the map that was shown to go, I think I'm right in saying that if permission is given to these, uh, that this uh, shop to 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 open as as uh, uh, for fast food, you've got four premises all right next to each other, so you have got a concentration of fast food takeaways in a very short, very very small area. That's how it looked to me on the map. Um, I mean, yeah, the concentration is what it is. It's there. Are, there are a couple of, together at the uh, northern end, I think it is, and then there's a few around the centre, and there's a couple at the southern end. So it's not that they're, you know, completely evenly spread out. Um, you know, but I recognise what Councillor Branson says. 
Right, somebody else needed to speak. Who, who was it? Councillor Nugent. Councillor Chair. Not yet. Hang on. You come next. Hang on. Is anybody else? New, yeah, it's Councillor Nugent wishes to speak. Councillor yeah. Nugent. Yeah, I um, I really do feel we have enough takeaways in that area. Um, you know, there's so many other premises that uh, do this type of food. And my other objection is because of the link with obesity. So I really think we have enough already there we don't need any more thank you councillor nugent anybody else councillor coop chair councillor coop yes, thank you chair um yes i mean we have discussed this in various things in the past regarding takeaways whether there's one two or whatever it's mainly a health thing as well uh councillor ostrom has been quite rightly uh, mentioning this for a long long time and so have i and others um it, it's a problem. I don't know how far this thing is on. It. It's just been started or it's nearly complete, perhaps irrelevant. But I think it's this problem with obesity and the discouraging of uh, the fast food takeaways for whatever reason. Um, it's it's difficult to say between it's a planning issue, it's a fast food takeaway issue. But uh, if I had any problem with it, it would certainly be over the obesity issue and the fact that we're getting more and more and more fast food takeaways, whether within the criteria and whether how do you just find a distance away, but we just seem to be getting more and more and more of them. So that is my um, thoughts, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Anybody else? Um, Councillors Dodds and Garvey, Chair. Ladies first, Councillor Dodds. Um, did I get the hip shots were not included in the percentage? Because they are really close to Linthorpe Road. Chair, through yourself. Um, there are a number of takeaways which are effectively abutting the, the boundary of the centre, which aren't in centre, but obviously are hot food takeaways. So, But they aren't. we haven't included them in the percentage calculation because they aren't technically within the centre. So if, if we make a decision on that, we would have to um, defend it based on what, you know, what the uh, actual situation is within the centre. Right. You know, they aren't far away from the main road. That's what I'm saying. You know, it's only yards down the street to the chip chase fish shop. And I think there's one, is it Stonehouse Street? Is the one still there? No. You know, there are more than a water on the main road. That's my concern. But also, if this applicant started building without planning permission, it doesn't fill you with confidence that you'll follow the rules of the opening hours. Can anything be done about that? Thank you. If you want, Andy, yes, if you could answer. Yeah. We can only, if, if somebody isn't abiding by opening hours, then all we can do is, you know, we put the condition on. If they don't abide by it, then we can uh, take enforcement action if it's expedient to do so, yeah. Right. So, Garvey, you wish to speak? Yes, thanks, Chair. Um, through you, Chair. Andy, can, can, just for clarity, can you explain why this boundary on the map is classed as the local centre and it doesn't extend to the, the other areas around? Chair, if I'm like, can I come in on that point? You can, Paul, yes. I certainly, um, Councillor Garvey, the, the boundary is defined for the local plan process and that boundary predates to... Um, 2009 when we did the local plan back then we're currently reviewing the local plan at this moment in time so that boundary may change but at the moment that boundary reflects how it was defined at the time and it was chosen to to um to focus on what was then seen before the retail core of the local center and you will notice this there will be local around about whether well, our units outside of that boundary which are still retail uses which don't actually fit within that boundary and we have to draw the boundary at some point um and that is the, that is the boundary which was to find that time we are in the process of reviewing them but for policy terms and decision making at the moment that is the boundary that we have to work with thank you if i can just add, add to that chair um obviously linthorpe road and, and some of the centers are sort of like a center in the main road so um some of these uses we're talking about are in the side streets and really 
it's possibly not good practice to have your boundaries going into the side streets for obvious reasons because they are largely residential and it would start to extend that into there but obviously like we say you know there are some existing ones that have arguably been there for some time thank you chair Councillor Matty, you wish to come again? Yes, Chair, thank you. Can you hear me all right? Yes, I can. Good. Um, it's just a question, just to clarify things for me and for everybody else, really. Can you confirm that the, that this applicant is not breaking any planning rules whatsoever? Thank you. Through you, Chair. Um, yes, it, he is in breach of planning by the fact that he's commencing development without having a permission in place. Oh, apart from that. Yeah, other than that, there's no, we're not aware that there's any other breaches. And obviously, we have powers, you know, were it not to be granted permission, we have powers to uh, get them to remove anything that um, they're doing that requires, you know, that would have required permission and didn't get it. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. Anybody else got any questions for Andy? No? Right, we'll move on. We have no applicants or no agents for this application, but we do have. A ward councillor, Councillor Furness. Would you like to speak, Councillor Furness? Yes, I'd like to speak. Uh, Andrew, could you please uh, pull up the slides? So that's okay, like slide 21. Yeah. What was the slide of, Councillor, please? Sorry. Uh, slide 21, the first one, please. Go. So the issue I have obviously um, here is this, from Oliver Street off the access, and that um, serves like YKHL, Kells, also a lot of businesses. Um, I'm just wondering the access actually from the back of the property is very small. Are they going to, and you're saying they're going to have to bin inside the property? I, I'm wondering if the, the gate itself is actually be big enough for an industrial size bin. Um, I don't know that, what type of bin they're going to have or how they're going to get rid of the waste. I know obviously restaurants have a number of different types of waste, especially being a takeaway. It might have like oil, how to dispose of that, and how can I actually get it out of the property? Um, and obviously, that, that alley as well serves a few. Uh, I think it's mainly industrial, I don't think it serves any of the residents, but it is like it's quite a heavy alley. Um, and then, can you move to the slide 25, please? Yep. And obviously looking at like everyone's raised as well, all the restaurants that aren't actually on this plan and looking at the map, it, to me, the map shows a uh, person cottage should be on there. You've got Chip Chase Road, you've got YK Chow, you've got um, Belly Lounge, you've got obviously Fellini's and uh, Central Park, you've got Olivello's. Um, Lost you, Councillor Firth. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know what you last heard, but I'm saying there's quite a few restaurants, and I can actually name every single one that isn't actually starred on there. And obviously, given what's going on in the world with the coronavirus and the like, the, um, social distancing, and the fact that all these restaurants are now giving, there's a lot of restaurants on there, that, like so Central Park, Fellini's, Olivello's, the Copperstone, Persian Cottage. Um, Delhi Lounge, you've got Khan's uh, restaurant. You could name every single one, and um, they're not starred on there. Um, I, I don't know if this is obviously, I don't know if that's been considered as well, or obviously, could be considered in the future. Uh, we may not actually have sit in restaurant provision for a long, long time, so effectively, all these restaurants are now takeaways. Chair, if I may comment at that point. Yes, you can, Paul. Um, the reason they're not shown is because they're a different use class. They'll be restaurant use class. Obviously, what we're talking about, the hot food takeaway. Um, the government has, yes, brought in a change in the planning rules. There's only a temporary change of rules, which allow restaurants to act as takeaways. Uh, but that will come to an end, and they will have to revert back to being restaurants. Mm. And what we're considering here is the A5 use class to take away hot food. Um, use class, and there isn't a committee development right for that to convert to a restaurant. Is currently, um, 
that's uh, so just the point I was just making. Well, like obviously, like Paul said, if that's a provision that they've been allowed just for now, and they might have to revert back to being just restaurants. Um, and obviously, the new the new takeaway that on uh, Linford Road. Obviously, this is data from 2019 that's been given permission, and the florist isn't part as well. Um, and then I would just like to move 27 onwards, if you could please, Andrew. How's it gone? Oh, there you go. I'll I'll bring it back. That's fine. Okay. Um, is it twenty-seven? Is that the proposed yeah, floor? So I think um, twenty-seven is sort of illustrates. If you see in the rear yard, there's a little gap at the back. That's the exit to the alley. And obviously, this doesn't give like obviously dimension-wise, or but I know industrial size bins can be pretty big, and. To me, that looks like it could be the same size as the doorway at the back of the rear. That's the one question I have. How many bins are they going to have and how will we store them? Because um, I get a lot of complaints from re uh, residents that live in the area. Currently, for different type of shops, the restaurants in the area, that obviously the bins aren't stored properly. They're not secured, so people get in, in them, rip them out and take all the food out or have you. Obviously, vermin get there. So this is just add, so it just compounds on top of that the issues that um, we're going we have currently. Um, but apart from that, obviously, uh, a lot of my questions just by what you said previously, where the flu is going to be in the size of it, and who's going to be able to see it, um, and obviously the access by parking stuff so obviously is restricted. Is residential parking down the side of Oliver Street and Chip Chase? And the one uh, the other side, but like you said, most people probably will walk. But it's it's something to be considered, I think, because if it is a restaurant and just I mean just takeaways and deliveries, the delivery drivers will have to park somewhere. Or I find a lot of the time they just park wherever they want on the pavement. Um, so I think that's just that's another thing to be considered. But uh, that's all I have to say. Uh, thanks for the time. Yeah, um... Councillor Furness, does anybody want to ask Councillor Furness anything? No? If Andy will read out the recommendations, please. Yeah, Chair, the recommendation is to approve subject to conditions, and the conditions that are proposed relate to time period to start will have started already by the sounds of it. Uh, sticking to the approved plans, the requirement for a noise assessment, requirement for a ventilation and fume extraction assessment requirement for odour and particulate assessment, uh, controlling the hours of opening from uh, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. and controlling the hours of delivery to be between the hours of 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Saturday and 9.30 to 6.30 on Sunday. What we haven't got there, Chair, and I just obviously, um, we haven't got a condition in relation to the management of bin collection. Obviously, Councillor Furness has mentioned the issue about bins, and obviously a lot of these properties do have the larger Euro size bins, which we know there is an issue with them getting left in alleyways. And it may be prudent, I think, as an officer, to I would like to add in at this point the recommendation that uh, members consider adding another condition in relation to the bin management and that bins have to be uh, maintained on the you know, within the premises and only put out on bin day sort of bin management condition chair could i speak you missed me sorry i just can't see everybody you know just... it's okay so can i speak now of course you can Oh, thank you. I know Councillor Cooper said that I've often commented on on fast food um, outlets uh, in different parts of the town, not just in in, in Linthor. Uh, I am concerned about the the number of takeaways we've got in the town as a whole, and and the uh, obviously health problems that we've got with obesity uh, and poor diet. But I think some of the things that don't get considered is is in particular um, where these establishments back onto residential areas. And we have a number in, in Linthorpe Village that back onto residential areas. Is the amount of noise with? Because what happens is as the night goes on, the noise gets louder. Yeah. And we've had complaints where it's actually the staff 
that make the noise because what they do is they open all the doors and windows and they're packing up the banging pans, the banging bins, they've got loud music playing. And we've had lots of complaints of that nature. Um, and then also the, there's a the parking problem. As, as has been said, there's no off-road parking around here. Uh, there's a pedestrian crossing in front of this place. Uh, there's a bus stop on the next block and we do have a regular bus service on a night through Linthorpe Village. And I can see all problems around the noise that coming from parking cars, from the delivery drivers, from banging doors and people shouting at each other. Um, so I, I actually um, don't want to approve this application. I do think that we have enough fast food outlets in, in Linthorpe Village and I would propose that we refuse it. Thank you, Councillor Rostra. Right, if nobody has any more questions for Councillor Thurless, we'll, uh, we'll open it up to the committee and we'll have a general discussion about it. So, we'll, uh, sorry. Councillor Thompson's got a hand up, I think. Has she? Councillor Thompson? Yeah, it wasn't for Councillor Thurless, it was for the general discussion. Right. Is it all right? Okay. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah, that's okay. In the general discussion when I asked to speak. I do apologise. I came in too. All right. I'll let you off this once, Julia, but don't do it anymore. Um, I've, got, I've got to say um, I'm against this application. Um, there's adequate takeaways in the area, um, object on the increase of traffic, parking in the area, noise and odours um, regarding the flu, litter um, and the, the um, waste disposal that the shop will have. It's close to the residential properties, so I would be opposing this application. Right, thank you. Right, um, I'm going to say something now. I, I went down on Sunday to see, to have a look at this, um, just as a matter of interest. And it does say in the application that all deliveries will be at the rear. And when I went down the road at the side where the rear is, there's alligators on. I looked through the alley gates, which are locked, and I could see two, maybe three, of these huge bins that they use already stacked in the alley. Now, I know there's these restaurants and takeaways next to this one aren't open. But, you know, as Councillor Thurless said, those bins should be kept on their properties. They shouldn't be in the alleyway at all when they were there. I'm most concerned about the parking at the front because... Um, as, as Councillor Rostron said, there's a, there's a zebra crossing and there's a bus stop. And all that will happen is that, that people delivering will just pull up on the front outside the shop and go in the front and leave the van or whatever it is there. And I know that, that, that there are other places on the area, on the, on the straight like that. They must all be doing the same. But at the end of the day, it isn't right. And I'm most concerned that that person has actually started to build something without planning permission. There's also a thing in the in the, um, in the the report where it says um, the specific details of order reduction and fume extraction has not been provided, uh, but they need to be submitted along with order assessments before it actually starts. Well, really, we should be having that sort of information now, shouldn't we? Or am I asking too much? Councillor, do you wish to speak? Yes, thank you. Hear me? Yes, I can. Fine. Um, I oppose it. I, I, I would oppose any further um, hot food takeaways or any kind of takeaways in the town because we are awash with them. I only hope, though, that the applicant doesn't appeal and win his appeal. But can I just say that I remember some years ago um, an applicant in, applied to uh, an end terraced house in Woodlands Road into a takeaway, and of course uh, they won. A little old lady lived next door and she tried to sell her house and she was stuck with it for years and years and years. And she had to more or less give it away simply because of this um, hot food takeaway that had been allowed to open up in the house, you know, changed the house next door to her. And although there are no houses literally joined onto this property, obviously there are some not too far away and it is bound to reduce the price of, of, of produce nearby. That's not my main concern. My main concern is health. We have a terrible reputation for health in this town and takeaway food contributes to it. There's no two ways of getting about it. So I would oppose it absolutely 100%. Thank you, Chair. Right, thank you. So, we have, sorry. Councillor Garvey and Councillor Branson would both like to speak. 
Right, Councillor Garvey. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, my, my main concern on this would be, again, the storage of the bins. The bins meant to be kept on, on site on the property uh, and looked after by, by the owner of the property. Uh, judging by the, the, the plans um, where the back gate is, I'd, I'd like to ask um, Andy, would there be space to put that bin and be able to take that bin out from the property into the yard? Because I just can't see where the space is on the actual property rather than the alley. Can you confirm that for me? Chair, yeah, through you. Um, I suspect looking at that, yeah, absolutely. Looking at that plan, it's, it's a narrow access and it looks like a building or yard wall that's, uh, that abuts that. Um, I don't believe a Euro bin would get out there. So the big sort of red steel bins that we see, the four wheeler ones, I don't believe it would. Um, we, you know, when, a lot of these users get private contracts to collect the bins, so it's within their power to, you know, get a private contract to collect wheelie bins or whatever it is they require collecting. So there's a, there's a there should be a, a technical solution to that of just using different size bins and more of them. Um, but I totally agree the the larger bins I don't believe would get out of that rear into the rear alley. Thank you, Andy. Councillor Branson, you wish to speak. Thank you, John. Yes, I, I would oppose this uh, development. I think it's there are too many uh, fast food uh, um, outlets in that particular area, particularly when you consider the wider area. Uh, I think there are clear issues of noise, disturbance, neighbours. I don't think that the actual premises themselves suit themselves to this kind of activity because of the uh, the poor access at the rear. So I would oppose. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Branson. Anybody else want to speak? Councillor Coop wishes to speak, Chair. Councillor Coop. Yes, thank you, Chair. Having listened to everything, I know I've already stated about uh, what Councillor Ostrom has quite rightly said over a period, quite a period of time, and I have also said it as well. Um, there's lots of issues here that has been brought up. There's issues, as just been stated, about the access for the bins, which don't seem satisfactory. I'm not sure through yourself, Chair, how far on that the building is done, whether they've just started or they've nearly finished. I would, would be interested in that because it seems that they haven't um, followed the instructions. They haven't given us the information required by the council. It just seems that they've either have ignored the rules or they may well ignore the rules in the future, which does disturb me. Um, there's lots and lots of takeaways in the area, whether you describe it as very close, very far away or not. Um, I'm one of these people who is against takeaways on principle, too many, but taking that away from this thing, I would be against this thing simply because of all the evidence given today, I don't feel it's uh, suitable for that area. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else want to say anything? Well, we've, we've, had, a, we've had a proposal from Councillor Rostrand to say we reject it. That's been seconded by, I think it was Councillor Thompson, was it? Yes, Chair. Yes. So, um, sorry, before, if, you, if that's getting moved, Chair, if we could just... Um, you want to raise that, I don't know. ...sort of clear the reasons. The, the things that I've been writing down um, that I've heard are in relation to a lack of information to be confident that it won't unduly affect residents in relation to noise and odours. Um, there was reference to um, lack of adequate bin storage. Yeah. Um, there was reference to impact residents uh, to the rear. I mean, we've got in relation, you know, noise that I've mentioned already probably picks that up, but, you know, direct Im implication for noise uh, to the residents to the property from the, the from the operation of staff and, and the likes. So they're the kind of three key things that I've got written down, Chair. I think parking as well should come into it. Parking and litter. Yeah. Yeah. If I may, Chair, litter's not really material consideration it's it comes down to individuals and it comes down to lack of bins or whatever I totally accept that you know people do throw things on the floor and this adds to it and it's this type of use that contributes to it but that's a that's a sort of social thing rather than a, a planning thing unfortunately can you not put them all down then andy as a reason or reasons 
Um, I think what we want to be mindful of is um, we don't really want to throw things in there um, that we don't feel we can reasonably defend. Um, it's obviously down to members. It's not you know down to me at this point. Um, all the properties along there haven't got access, you know, for parking and for pick up, drop off, whatever you want to call it. So if somebody proposes a retail premises down this location and we say, well, there's no parking for this use, then does the retail use be considered in the future? So we just need to be mindful that, you know, if there's a big accept acceptance or has been for a long period of time on lack of parking in this area, then is that something that we want to now pick up on this specific application? But it is down, obviously down to the members, Chair. Well, I, I would think the, the pick of the bunch is, is, is actually the, is, is the dustbins, keeping the dustbins, because I don't, I don't think they can keep them inside and, and, I, and I don't really want to see them left in the alleyway. Anybody else got anything to say? Chair, Sorry, Councillor Nugent, you wish to speak. Yeah, I will be objecting to it as well. Uh, as, as Julie pointed out earlier on, it is a residential area. And then, of course, there's another issue to it is litter picking, because as Andrew had mentioned earlier, there'll be rubbish thrown around. So there'll be the issue of litter picking and garbage all over. So. All right, thank you, Councillor Nugent. Councillor Coop wishes to speak, Chair. Councillor Coop. Thank you, Chair. Just to uh, reiterate the points that I did make, that the, the fact that they've gone ahead and started the premises, they haven't submitted any information required, etc. It puts me in mind that perhaps in the future um, they won't follow the rules. And that is a planning uh, uh, constraint, I would have thought. Yeah, I would think so. Would that be sufficient, Andy? Got those I, I wouldn't chair i wouldn't like to add that last one that they've, they've started and not follow the rules that's you know completely yeah. un, un, this, you know we can't evidence this, it but they've started without permission andy yeah and we've got no we've got no information on some of that survey work in terms of noise and odors so that's that seems reasonable to say lack of information yet okay i think just just on the parking chair when it was a retail premises the goods that were going in and out they could do it from the back of a car whereas when you've got a food establishment the deliveries are much bigger and they're delivered by big lorries and it does make a difference councillor mcteague yes chair can um someone just clarify that um that, that um litter or you know the, the increased litter is not a planning consideration or is, is it a planning consideration w which is it i am in the impression that it's not yeah no it's, you're right councillor it's not a material planning consideration it's a mm -hmm. Thank you. Councillor Wilson wishes to speak to you. Councillor Wilson. Yeah, Chair. Um, are those pedestrian lights at the front of that shop on that on that uh, section? Yes. Yeah, pedestrian lights. So a HGV, so, yes. so a HGV vehicle delivering there would impede those traffic lights. You'd have to ask Councillor Rustron. She lives quite close to it, I believe. Councillor Rustron, can you answer that? If there were H HGV vehicles, um, they would actually have to park on the pedestrian crossing. Yeah, so if you get an eight ton HGV, HGV vehicle, you're going to take up one lane near enough, so yeah. you might as well close yeah. half that road off. There's also there's a, there's a taxi rank on the other side of the road. Yeah. OK, thanks, Chair. Right. OK, everybody, thank you very much. So we've had a proposal. We've had a proposal now that we reject the application. It's been seconded. If I read your names out, will you will you be the answer for against or abstain? We'll start with me at the top. I'm against. Councillor Coop. I am against. I'm against. Councillor Dodd. Sorry. Um Against. Councillor Garvey. Against, Chair. Councillor McTeague. I'm against, Chair. Councillor Nugent. Councillor Nugent. Yeah, hold on. I'm hanging on. Councillor Nugent against. Against. Councillor Rostron. 
I'm against, Chair. Councillor Thompson. Against. Councillor Wilson. Councillor Wilson. Against. Chair, I can confirm that all 10 members of the committee have voted to refuse the application. Right. Application refused. Thank you very much. One more to go. This is, it. this is item number three. It's a planning application at Ackland Green School, Lower Grove, Middlesbrough. It's a single story extension to provide additional student facilities. So, I'll just sort myself out. Right, we'll go straight over to Andy. Thank you, Chair. So, not when his pictures up. Planning permission sought for this extension to Ackland Grain School is to provide an autism resource centre consisting of a classroom for 16 pupils, a staff room for three additional staff, and a small number of other ancillary rooms. So, we've got changing rooms, staff room, meeting room, meditation room, etc. Um, and that's the uh, layout that you see on the slides. There's also a little uh, sort of sensory type garden associated with this and a relocated footpath around the edge of this uh, building. The site, well the building is located attached to the other parts of the school building. It'll be accessed via the school building rather than a separate block. Uh, so we can see from the slide with the red rectangle that's where it's positioned. It's located quite a distance away from residential properties surrounding the school then. Um, Loader load, load Grove uh, gives access to the site. Um, off to the west we've got Bluebell Beck and the A19 beyond them and we've got Resi sort of to the north, east and south. Um, the extension would measure approximately 12 metres by 20 metres, be constructed from brick and render and have a flat roof. The Autism Resource Centre has been proposed, so it'd have this small garden and that would be fenced off from the rest of the school grounds by a two metre high weld mesh fence. Some objections have been received, a total of 38 um, comments, 37 objection and one in support. And the slide that's on shows in with the blue squares all the consultation letters that were sent to people who live in the area the red triangles show where the objections come from and the green triangle shows where the uh, person in support lives the um they're all summarized within the report that members have um and in greater detail we put a lot of these in the appendix to make sure we weren't over summarizing um the the details the majority of objections chair relate to the existing impacts of traffic accessing and leaving the school particularly at school opening and closing times and the additional impacts that this proposal will also result in there are other objections and they kind of relate to suggestion that there should be a second access off Haythrop drive that um, there should be a drop-off point on mandale road or ackland road to prevent the need for vehicles from entering loader grove uh, concerns over the pollution from additional traffic, issues around emergency vehicles accessing the area and the school and the properties in this area when the traffic's within this environment, noise from the additional traffic and construction traffic, impact on the environment, impacts on drainage, concerns over litter, antisocial behaviour and also vehicles parking which is assumed would be parents vehicles parking on Loader Grove and blocking people's driveways. So turning to the planning considerations then, um, as members will be aware, planning law requires applications to be considered. We've got to consider them against the local development plan as a starting point, the national planning policy guidance as a material planning consideration, and then other sort of site specific material planning considerations. What's important to this application is that an application shouldn't really be required to mitigate existing issues it needs to be considered on its own merits and the impacts that this proposal has um so if i can just go back a couple of slides um 
looking at the surroundings and the, the sort of local plan policy, the school fields and the site where the extension would be built lie within the allocated uh, land, which is allocated in the local plan as green infrastructure, green wedge and primary open space. These policies generally seek to restrict new development from taking place within them where it where it would undermine the provisions. Um, the proposed extension in this instance really is fairly small. It arguably maintains the same use of the school. It's a modest extension. Um, it doesn't undermine how the green wedge, the open space, uh, and the and the green infrastructure functions, um, and it, that would be very much retained. So the school fields will still form a buffer between nearby development elsewhere and other allocations within the local plan. So it's compliant with that con the, uh, that those policies. There's also a policy CS16, which we've got, and that relates to education specifically. Um, that advises that the council will ensure that everyone has access to the facilities required to meet their educational needs, and that when considering the provision of new facilities, including extensions, regard will be had to its contribution to the regeneration of the area, the elimination of overcrowding in schools, and the design and the use of materials to provide high quality learning environment and ensuring that facilities are, are accessible. So the principle of development is obviously uh, acceptable. It's an extension to the school within the school grounds. In terms of the character and appearance of the works, then um, it's a small addition to the overall school building, single story, rendered lower section uh, and brick fits with the character and appearance of the existing school, shouldn't have any notable impact on the surrounding properties in view of the distance and the design and scale of the proposal. Looking at residential amenity and privacy, there's probably two aspects to this, the impact of the use at this location and the traffic impacts of the use. Um, so I've mentioned that it's, it's a long way away from properties, so it's not a particular concern there, but with regards to traffic, there's been obviously a lot of objection to the ap application, specifically or, or most significantly in Loader Grove. Um, objectives refer to both the existing problems that are experienced at pick up and drop off time and the additional concerns that the additional traffic will add to that. Members, I'm sure, will appreciate that um, sort of any school in our area probably has some parking and traffic related issues and some issues around pupils and how they move towards the schools in and out of the schools and, and any implications that they may have or cause for for local residents um it's not too dissimilar to our busiest roads that lead into the town and anyone who lives on those roads you know at peak times they suffer a higher impact of, of sort of traffic implications than what you would expect on maybe the side streets so it's 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 kind of a a problem associated with with the nature of the uses in the area i think importantly to this application it's got to be considered on its own merits um we have looked at the application this is for an additional 16 pupils which equates to one a 1.1 percent increase in student numbers and the floor space equates to just over 2% increase in floor space, I understand. Um, in terms of school capacity, relative to traffic, uh, the school currently has 150 car parking spaces within that main parking area that's shown on the slides. It's got within that an additional eight accessible bays, um, which is all accessed off Loader Grove. There's 15 drop-off bays, which are marked on the plan there that uh, parents can use it's understood. There are further 27 car parking spaces associated with the MCL, the Middlesbrough Community Learning Building, which is off to the sort of eastern side of that, just as you're coming off Loader Grove. And then there's a further 85 car parking space with additional two accessible bays associated with the Acorn Centre. The Acorn Centre you'll see and the uh, school parking are severed. They aren't joined up with an internal roadway. They are severed and it looks like playgrounds that are in between the two. Um, Council's highways team have considered the application and the existing traffic situation in the area, the provision at the site, as well as the indicated numbers of additional pupils and it's a highways officer's view that the current level of parking provision is in accordance with the Tees Valley Highway Design Guide standards and this falls uh, and this is therefore catered for. 
is the high risk officer professional view that any associated traffic should be relatively minimal or negligible in association with this and there's no real grounds to object to this or seek mitigation or contributions based on um, such minor increases. It's considered that the additional traffic and pedestrian activity associated with the application would not amount to a level of demonstrable harm to residential amenity that would warrant refusal of the application. Some of the comments that receive, have been received, Chair, relate to highway safety. Um, and this is impacts, you know, around the congestion issues, um, people using footpaths, how they're used, people blocking driveways, ask, access for emergency, uh, emergency vehicles. Uh, and some of this relates to the safety of, some of these concerns relate to the safety of pupils. I think, again, in view of the limited scale of it, the additional, limited additional pupils, it's felt that all these impacts really are going to be a, a fairly small or negligible increase to the existing situation. And as such, um, you know, this application is not uh, significantly harming those existing set of circumstances. I think um, it's accepted, you know, that, you know, what, as, what we're saying as officers in recommending approval on this chair is we're not saying that there aren't any impacts for the local area. You know, we, we often view that there is a lot of impacts in and around schools. But what we're saying is that this proposal for such a small number of uh, educated for a small number of students is not significantly increasing the impacts. Um, other comments are detailed in the reports, Chair. Council's Highways Officers present, obviously Simon Thompson, who can answer any queries on that. But in summary, it's a very small scale uh, extension in terms of the overall use it's going to generate, and it's not com uh, conflicting with a sort of green space, green wedge type policies and officer recommendations to approve with uh, conditions, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Anybody got any questions for Andy? Um, Chair, can I just advise that Councillor um, Joe McTigh has left the meeting? Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Anybody got any questions for Andy? Anybody got any questions for the Transport Officer, Simon Thompson? Yes, I've got one, uh, Chair, please. Chair, go ahead. Um, these students, what sort of ages are they? Are they going to be using the um, the app school buses to take them in? Okay, Chair, um, we've when we've considered it, uh, you know, obviously they could all come by bus, um, which would have a minimal impact on traffic. They could all come by car, and that would, you know, suggest an additional sixteen cars or something. Um, it's been the view. Can, it's, it's been assumed that, you know, as a worst case scenario, it would not be a significant impact. So if it was to be a bus, then it would be a reduced impact to that. But it's, it's really down to the management of the school. It's not something planning would normally control the, the way pupils are, are, are taken to school. Thank you, Chair. Is it classed as special, as special needs for autism, Andy? It, it is an autism resource centre, yes, it is, Councillor, yeah. So it could be classed as uh, special needs? I don't know the classifications, but quite possibly, I don't know. Generally, generally speaking, I think, if I remember rightly, special needs would probably use um, transport to fetch them in. Uh, that, if that's the case, then, like you say, traffic would be down to a minimum. Thank you, Jeff. Councillor Councillor Nugent, do you wish to speak? <coughs> yeah. Um... That um, this um, uh, the, the, uh, this little building is being prepared for our autistic children, okay? And yes, they do have special needs. But what I would say, reading one of these objections, these children won't be running along the avenue littering because they will either be perhaps bust in or their parents will take them in by car. They don't. Um, they won't be walking along. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else got any questions for Andy or Simon? Councillor Branson would like to speak, Chair. Uh, yes, I've, I've got a, a, a query regarding construction traffic getting onto the site. 
Uh, and at the moment, the main concern is that uh, the access through Loader Grove is very, very congested. Uh, one thing that we certainly should be looking at is any construction work coming through the alternative uh, uh, entrance, which is Haythrop. Could that be something to take into consideration? Come back on that, Chair. Um, if there's anything in depth, Simon can answer, I guess. But as a general rule, we tend not to control construction traffic particularly. Um, we sometimes try and limit the hours of access to construction traffic. The, the, what normally happens is when planning does try and control construction traffic to certain hours and all the rest of it, what you find is the site doesn't let them on, but the, the vehicles still pull up outside and actually cause a greater problem for the residents in the area. Um, the construction in and around school, I would be exceptionally surprised if this would get built during term time and when the yeah. students are there. I can't imagine the school would mix heavy goods vehicles with uh, students, but it, it's not really a planning issue. It's it's outside of planning in that sense. Thank you, Chair. Anybody else got anything to say? Chair, Councillor Coop. Councillor Coop. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I know parking is a very emotive issue. I understand that. Um, but in this case, there's not going to be very many. There's going to be 16, which has, has been explained more likely coming by bus etc i think that the problem here is that the area is absolutely overwhelmed when the children go in and come out of school and even one more would feel emotive to them i think in this case the the, the children concerned in here won't cause too many problems certainly as has been explained they won't be walking down and throwing things at people i think these these children with special needs are going into a centre and if they're going into there at a mainstream school it does mean that they they are there for a good reason so i, I do understand greatly about the problems of parking etc but i honestly believe that the 16 are not going to add to that but i have an open mind about it thank you chair thank you very much councillor cope anybody else got anything to say to andy councillor dodds wishes to ask a Councillor question. Dodds, please come in Can I just say that when Atlam Grange School was rebuilt a number of years ago, there was a temporary road brought in from Mandale Road across the field. So the construction traffic didn't interfere with the residential area. But it, would that be, has that been spoken of? Would that be possible? You know, it would keep Loader Grove free and then they came around the back of the school. I mean, Chair, yeah, it's again, it's not really construction traffic. We, like I say, we tend to stay away from controlling. Um, there's no reason why that couldn't happen. I mean, it's obviously a, a council scheme, as I understand it. So it's within the council's ability to do that. Obviously, when the school was built, I would assume that would be a one or two year build program. It would be a significant amount of traffic, um, hundreds, if not thousands of, of vehicles over that period of time with something, I mean, this is sort of 12 meter by 20 meter single story extension, which is you know probably the equivalent of maybe three or four sort of house extensions um, getting built. So the level of traffic I wouldn't have thought would generate the, the desire to build a, a new sort of what we would call a haul road uh, for, for construction traffic across the fields from, from Mandale Road. But um, I don't perceive that this is of a scale where we would need to get particularly involved chair i realize i kind of come in again i realize this is so it, it, I, I live not far from lord of grove and i know the problem that they have and they park a, a mile away to get to that school they park all the way down trimden avenue where i live and it it causes a lot of problems and i don't think this new artistic building is going to make that much difference because i think they will come in on one coach but I think because of this, at the same time this is being built, is it possible to look into the oh. idea of using Haythrop Drive as it used to be? Before it was Ackland Gray, it was Stainsby years ago, there were always two entrances. Is that worth looking at? Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if you want me to respond, Chair, or not. I just, uh... If you can, Andy, yeah. Um, I mean, 
you know, th th there's two aspects to this. One is what's relevant to this planning application or what's um, uh, proportionate to this planning application. And the other aspect is, you know, in terms of if there is other problems, it's, you know, if it's a council school, what considerations does, does the council have aside from this planning application? And um, that's not something planning controls. Um, that would have to be, you know, different teams, different departments. Um, and that's something, you know, that I suppose members would have much more influence than I would if, if it was me sending emails. But it sounds like there's slightly two, two, two aspects here to me. One is what we've got here and one is a, an ongoing issue that is not necessarily that um, that great for residents down there. But probably can't say much more than that, really. Thanks, Thanks Andrew. Thanks. Anybody else wish to say anything? OK, we'll carry on. Right. Yeah, I think right. Councillor Garvey had his hand up there. Did you, Councillor Garvey? I, I can't see you. Garvey? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Okay. Um, I've I've read through the um the uh, I'm I'm all for looking you know the objections and, and these are people who live around there and 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 um you know if, if, if they would feel it would affect their life. I've read through all of them, and if we're talking about material planning concerns i can't find any with any of the objections in fact two of the objections state that they have trouble getting to other schools so so you're talking about somebody who's complaining about traffic at one school and is complaining that they can't get to another school so the people around that school probably have the same objections to them dropping their kids off at school so i just as as stated before with 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 so few appeal so few pupil, pupils and the, the 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 additional needs pupils that'll be going in, the traffic isn't going to be isn't going to be um, added too greatly, and it, it is much needed. When 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 we Andrew said we have to take into consideration uh, the educational needs, you know, the, the school, then I think then you know I can't see, I can't find a reason to to turn this down in in any of the objections. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, sure. Thank you, councillor. Mr. Nugent, do you want him to speak? No. no. Right, anybody else want to say anything before we move on? Okay, with this application, we've got no applicant, we've got no agent, and we've got no objectors. So we now come to the ward councillor. That's Councillor Arundel. Would you like to speak, Councillor Arundel? Thank you, Chair. Just a uh muted my microphone good afternoon everybody um i just like to say from from the very beginning that um i have a very good relationship with this school that i went there when it was stains me as did my two sons the issue we've got here is traffic lord of grove um is is absolutely chocker at the, the four times down during the day when the, when the school starts and when the it can be solid from inside the school gates to the traffic lights at Ackland Road. It can take me longer to get the length of Lord of Grove than it does for me in normal times to drive to the town hall. That's how serious it is at present. I know it's just been said we can't deal with ongoing issues, although you have included them on those on two former applications, right? So that seems a bit of an imbalance there. The situation has got worse, actually, since they built the new school because the layout and access to the school was changed completely and, and Lord of Grove became the main entrance and Haythrop Drive takes virtually nothing now and the boundary road that used to run round between Haythrop Drive and um, Lord of Grove entrances was taken out or covered uh, so that means virtually all the traffic to that school which has increased in size comes in down Lord of Grove and I know it didn't seem like many 16 it's the final straw. People can't get out of, of, of their properties. And I, I, thank God at the present, we've, at the, we have never had an incident where an emergency vehicle hasn't been able to get down, but it's getting to the stage where that will happen. Um, and actually, when, when the new school was, was planning an application went in, planners at that time said, had it not been for the fact that there was an existing school there, that would have been rejected on the grounds of access. So that just shows you how serious the problem is. In normal times, I would have asked for a site visit, but obviously at 
this present moment in time, things aren't normal, there's no traffic going in and out. And all we're asking for is some far, some way of mitigating the traffic issues on, on Loader Grove by possibly doing something with an access from Aethrop Drive. So um, that's basically all I have to say. It's about traffic. People can't get off Ruskin Avenue, and they can't get off Honister, and all the roads are joint that. It's a nightmare. Um, so I hope you'll bear that in mind. Consider this application. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. Has anybody got any questions that they'd like to ask councillor Arundel? Councillor Nugent, was that you or no? No? Anybody? Councillor Dodds and um, councillor Coop. Councillor Coop, you go first, councillor Coop. Thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, Councillor Arundel, <laughs> I, I know it's a very emotive issue, especially I, I know what it's like with access schools. Uh, I have it, the same problem, perhaps not as worse, on my ward. And I know the area well because I used to go to school not far away from there. <laughs> the, the problem is that 16 pupils are not going to make much difference. I think it's a deeper issue here that you've been explaining. Um, do you know of any reason why the roads were blocked off um, behind there, or is there any reason? Because the trouble is, it's considering that in a planning application, it might not be appropriate. But do you know of any reason why? And presumably, it's the council that blocked it. Then the council can open it up again. And I think that's certainly another issue that should be considered. If you could answer that through you, Chair. Councillor Aldo. I, I don't know of any reason why the boundary road was closed, to be quite honest. In fact, um, I can't understand why that was done because, as I've said, in the event of an emergency at a school, uh, you can only access the school from one from one road, and that is, that is Lord of Grove. Um, if, if there's an issue with the main entrance or a fire or whatever, they can only come in down Lord of Grove. So I just can't understand the logic of... Um, and doing away with the boundary road, which actually runs at the back of my property, um, it would be an inconvenience. But I would accept that if it could be done, because the strain on the people who are trying to get off this site, trying to get off Ruskin Avenue, Keswick, and whatever, is it's it's terrible. People who work normal working hours, office hours, I would say, you know, nine or twelve, they have to set off a half an hour earlier than they would normally have to. I, I don't have to because I'm retired and I can avoid it. But if the times when I've had to go out there, I've told you, it takes me longer to get from my house to Acklam Road, which is about 250 yards, than it does to get to the town hall. That's existing. And 16, yes, it's not many people, but it's an add-on again. And then how many more are they going to add on and add on and add on? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Somebody else wish to speak? Councillor Dodds, I think. What I was going to say is, before the new school was built, children could access the school across the fields. I don't know why that was changed. There was a gateway the where they could get in. Was it because of the rubbish? The Sorry, it's because of the rubbish being left there. Um, but there were other ways where children on foot could access the school. I know that doesn't solve the traffic problem, but it would solve the problem of all these children going down Lord of Grove on a night, causing problems and coming in on the morning. I can answer that. For I can things. answer that. It's, it's to do with safeguarding. And the incident that happened to, the, to a school on Hall Drive some years ago while a child, child was killed, all schools now have to be fenced off for safeguarding. There's a gate there. It's unlocked for fire services, isn't it? Open it, you know, quarter to nine and close it. All schools are locked. Got to be able to get in there. So there could be a security person on that gate on the field. So thank you. Councillors Branson and Garvey wish to speak, Chair. Right, Councillor Branson. 
Thank you. Um, I know it's not directly relevant to the application for the reasons that have been said, but I think we do need to consider um, the, the, the use of Heythrop Drive as an alternative access route, if only on the issue of health and safety. Um, because uh, uh, Councillor Arundel has made the point that if there's a fire uh, in any of the properties in Ruskin Avenue, um, you can't get to it at school time because it's going to be blocked by traffic. So I think there are good reasons why, even though this isn't relevant to the planning application as such, it would be a sensible idea to look at reinstating that road within the pre premises uh, so as to enable people to leave through the Haythrop exit as well as the Lodo exit. Thank you. Thank you, David. Who else was the one wanted to speak, Councillor? Councillor Garvey, Chair. Councillor Garvey, please. I think, guys, um, maybe we are missing the point a little bit. It, it's it's an application for a building. There's no reason why the school couldn't just use alternative part of the school for these 16 pupils and turn it into exactly the same thing. The school can up the numbers and, and, and lower the numbers without anybody knowing. This is 16 pupils. We're talking about the building and in the building where actually affect the amount of traffic going through. I, I, I can't, you know, the, the school don't have to build this extra building for these children. They could just access another part of the school and still have those 16 children there. So we're talking about the building, the actual building, and, and, and I, I don't think it makes that much difference. I can't see it making that much difference. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. Chair? Yes. Uh, Councillor Ostrom, uh, I'm aware that this has been a problem for, for many years. It's nothing new. I mean, it, it, it's gone on for a long, long time and no solution has, has been arrived at. Would it be possible for us as a committee to refer it to the executive member who's responsible for, for this, um, for, for the roads and such like and access, to see if we can get something done? Because I know as a committee, a planning committee, we can't make a decision on, on, on how you know, people get to the um, the school and such like, but but it, it is a problem. I think it's more serious than it is in some other areas of the town. In my experience. We, we could we could probably we could make a decision on this planning application, and then probably the ward councillors of the area could go to the executive member for, for the building site and try and sort something out with the, with the council to put something in because. Quite obviously, you know, the way we're building houses, we're going to get more and more children. More and more children are going to be going to school. It's inevitable eventually that this school will want something else building onto it in future years, isn't it? It's going to, yeah. it's going to grow and grow. So possibly we, we, we could work it that way. But maybe, I don't know who the executive member is. It Would it be, be Dennis McCabe, environment? I don't know. Possibly. Yeah, I'm not possibly. sure. Um, it would possibly be um, Councillor Ashley Waters, um, the be, executive yes. member for Regeneration Chair. Probably would, yes. Yeah. Well, we, could, we could maybe do that. We could maybe get, get the, get the councillors. I mean, Ron's one councillor. Who's the other councillor with you, Ron? Sorry? Who's the other councillor with you in your ward? Jim Platt, but he's, he's had a... Uh, I know, a I know he's not available at the moment. For this tonight. Yeah. I don't know whether you heard what Councillor Rostrand said. She said, you know, possibly it might be if if the two councillors in the ward could get together with the executive member, talk about doing something with Hairthorpe Drive and the school, you know, we could dis dispose, get rid of this, do, do this planning application now. And then in, in, in obviously, you know, we're, the way we're building houses, we're going to get more and more children. So. Going to get more and more people coming, so eventually they're going to want another extension somewhere. Uh, and, and if we could get the airdrop drive opened up and sorted out, it might alleviate that. Um, councillors Thompson and Councillor Dodds wish to ask a question, Chair. Councillor Thompson, thank you. It's, it's just when you're talking about the increase of traffic, um, we are talking, as, as Councillor Garvey says, this is an increase of 16 children. Um, and yeah, the traffic, this, this traffic's not exclusive just to this school. The traffic's an issue through every school within Middlesex. It is, yes. Mark, Mark Chun used to go to Palestine Park. That was a very um, narrow school, narrow park, and, um, and the cars were parking there. 
So it's it's the parking problem throughout Middlesbrough, not just this school. And I think what needs to be done is the parents need to be educated about taking their children to the school. They need to maybe start walking to the school and not going in the cars, get them out the cars. That's the issue, not the um, the increase of cars. It's a middle for a wide thing. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Dodds. Back when that chair. I agree with Councillor Thompson. It, it is middle for wide. Um, I think a good idea might be to get the parents to walk these children to school, and it might be a good idea for the parents to go into the school and have some education on how to look after their children when they roam in the streets at night, causing havoc. It's nothing to do with this, but where we live, it's terrible. Councillor Wilson, you said as though you wanted to speak. Is that right? Yes, please, uh, Chair. It, when you go to Prairie Woods, it's um, quarter past three on, on normal times. You've got 18 school buses coming out of there, and you've got Tottenham Avenue, which is a short avenue in Netherfields. That road is blocked up totally with school buses. Now, parent-wise, I think there's about four taxis going in for uh, pupils out of Prairie Woods. Uh, I think it's three, four, five parents going in. But then you've got the added uh, taxis, or parents of uh, taxis going to um, Outwood Academy at Ormsby as well. But then you've got Fullbeck Road, but going out to Carcali Lane, which is literally stood still because of the 18 buses. But that's 18 buses, not parents. So 16, one bus takes 16 children into Lord Grove. Okay, it's a nightmare coming out, but it's no different to Tottenham Avenue, Priory Woods. Thank you, Chair. Right, thank you very much. Right, so... Can I speak again, Chair, please? Um, I'm sorry, Dale. I don't know about that. Yes, go on. Long and quick. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, of course, it would be very desirable for people to, to walk their children to school. But unfortunately, the situation is that it's not as it used to be with catchment areas. Children from any part of the town can apply to go to that school, and it's a very successful school, so lots of them do. And the fact of the matter is, people go to that school, kids go to that school from all over the town because it's a successful town. That's why so many come in cars. So that's that's the logic behind. And if, if, if it was 16 children coming in in the bus, that would be lovely. But I don't think it will be. Can I come in, Chair? Yes, you can. I do understand that, but I also understand that if we look at the objections and how many people have objections, it's less than half of people, less than half who've been consulted. Um, can I just say, can we move on now to um, yes, the planning? Yes. Can, we have some, can we have some proposals as to what we're going to do with this plan application? I propose for for it um i don't see any reasonable objections to it um yeah there's an increase in traffic but it's 16 16 children who are autistic who need a school to go to so i don't have any objections and i i would um agree to the application I'll second I'll second it. Second it. right so i'll read the names out we vote four against all i'm saying we start at the bottom councillor wilson Thompson. No. Councillor Rostrum. No. Councillor Nugent. No. Councillor McTeague. She's not here. She's gone. Councillor Garvey. Four, no. Chair. Councillor Dodds. Four. No. Councillor Branson. Four. No. Councillor Cuff. Four. No. Councillor Hobson. Four. No. I don't think we need to count them. It's a unanimous decision. So the application is passed. Right, now then. <laughs> so that can, we'll have to be, because we're running out of time. Agenda item six, these are the applications approved by the head of planning. These are these little, I don't think you'll see it, these papers with the little square boxes on, with everybody's ward on, and they're all the decisions that have, made by, that have been made by officers since our last meeting. And there's rather a quite a few of them because we haven't had a meeting since about the first week in March. So does have anybody, anybody have any comments on any of these? Nobody? Right, no 
Okay. Um, Councillor so, Eugen, I think, wishes to ask a question. Councillor Eugen, do you want to ask something? She's gone. She's left the meeting, Chair. Okay. Right. Agenda item six, planning appeals. We didn't have any planning appeals, Andy, did we? No, we've done to report, Chair. Right. Any other business? Uh, there is none. So thank you for your attendance and we'll close the meeting. Thank you for being here. I know it's been a long time, but what can you do? Thank you very much. You went very well, Chair. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Bye, guys. Goodbye, yeah, right. everyone. Bye. Bye. Is, is Georgina still there? Are you still there, Georgina? Yes, I'm here, Chair. I'll expect your comments by Monday. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, um, Chair, yes, sir. Chair, can I just confirm that we're still live?